So you have to be behind the Remarkable Paid Connect subscription to be able to use what I would think is a feature that should just be part and parcel of the device rather than something that you pay for. Remarkable Beta Update 3.22 is now out and it is a significant one which includes a very heavily requested feature but it comes with a caveat and one that I want to discuss throughout this video as I do an in-depth overview of everything that is included in this update. Before I go on to this, just a reminder that this is a beta update so that means you need to be opted into the Remarkable Beta program on my Remarkable 2 here, I'm in the settings menu under software. You can put the slider into advanced and you can enroll on the Remarkable beta program. Just a heads up that if you do enroll the updates, there is more of a chance that there'll be bugs within these updates because it's not fully tested. However, in my experience, generally the updates have been absolutely fine with maybe a couple of bugs here and there, but there's been nothing significant that I have noticed personally. Another important note is that if you are on the beta program and you check for updates and you don't have the update yet, that is because Remarkable rolls out their updates in phases. It's not all done at once. For example, I know some people who had this update nearly a week ago and it's only just landed with me now. So just be patient and it will land with your device in due course. So on to the release notes now. So the heading is handwriting search which is the significant update here. But I'm gonna work backwards and I'm gonna start on new icons, then I'm going to discuss the movable toolbar, and then we're gonna conclude with talking about the handwriting search, because just a quick heads up, that is not fully rolled out yet. It mentions here that it's coming in the next two to three weeks, so I'll probably do a follow-up video at that point. But let's start by looking at the new icons. I'm just gonna move my Remarkable 2 to the side here. I'm just gonna show you what these design touches look like. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. So I would explain it that they've essentially added some shading and slightly altered the icons here. Let's zoom in a little bit more. So you can see here that the icon has had some shading on the left side. And if we open up the menus of the various pens, you can see the same has been applied to all of these. It's almost like there's uh, a shadow being cast on them, making them a bit more 3D looking. Uh, it's very simple, but perhaps looks a bit nicer. The one significant thing I've noticed is that the undo and redo arrow are, are very thin now, and they've added an extra feature, which I don't believe they had before is that if the arrow goes thinner, that means the, the uh, option is not usable. And if the arrow is slightly thicker, it means the option is usable. So obviously, because I've just drawn a line, we can go ahead and select undo. And now you'll notice that redo becomes thicker because the option is there to use that. My slight criticism on this is that when, it, <laughs> when the arrow is thinner, it is barely visible. If I can zoom out, it's incredibly thin, it almost looks like it's there by accident, so they probably need to thicken that out a bit. So I'd provide that as a bit of feedback to the Remarkable team, I'm sure they can adjust that, it's an easy one to sort. Other than that, let's have a look at the other rest of the menu, and you can see the same sort of shading style is carried out here, with little bits of shading in the corners. All in all, they've just done a bit of a revamp of how those icons look. Quite an insignificant update really, but making things look a little bit nicer perhaps. Next up, we've got the toolbar. So if you go into your main menu and into the accessibility settings, you'll now see an option here that says toolbar position. And it's quite nice how they've not just um, enable you to customize it in portrait mode. You can also select landscape mode and it doesn't have to be the same for both. But I quite like having it at the bottom here and this is quite a significant update for me or for those who maybe use more customized PDFs such as planners. This is a custom made PDF planner which I have available in my shop which I'll leave the link for in the description. But when you're making these or making templates for yourself, 
you'd have to bear in mind where the toolbar would be. So obviously, as you can see here, I've, I've left a section on the left-hand side because I'm right-handed, so I typically have the toolbar here. But now you can opt to put the toolbar at the bottom or at the top. So for left-hand users who may have had the toolbar on the right-hand side, maybe that was covering up something on a certain template, but now you can move that to the top or the bottom. And just for those that are interested, once you go into a hyperlink, this menu that appears now goes above that toolbar here. And you'll also notice that the page number summary is also added on top of where that toolbar goes. If you're wanting to move the toolbars, simply use your pen, hold down on it, and you'll see the black line appearing at the bottom there, or at the side here. That means it's ready to drag and drop essentially so you can move them around mid document if you're wanting a bit of extra space where that toolbar is covering nice and handy it's a nice little feature for sure but one that you do see present on a lot of other competing e-ink tablets so it's nothing new or groundbreaking but certainly nice to have onto the last aspect of the update, which is the handwriting search. As I mentioned, it has not been rolled out yet, so I can't currently, for example, search Joe in this document, and because it's handwritten, um, it doesn't work for me there. However, with the typed text, I can go ahead and search that, and it will pick up on it. There you go. Um, so the, the handwritten text search function is not available yet. Now the aspect of this update which I personally don't quite agree with and I'd love to hear the rest of the community's opinion on this is, let me just zoom in on the update here, is that the handwriting search is only for or an exclusive to connect subscribers so you have to be behind the remarkable paid connect subscription to be able to use what I would think is a feature that should just be part and parcel of the device rather than something that you pay for. Um, with other e-ink devices, again, it comes with it. It doesn't feel like the sort of thing which should be put behind a paywall, in my opinion. But this is just a feature which feels fundamental um, to people being able to use their device, in my opinion. Uh, so it's quite sad that they've put that behind the paywall. So again, let me know what you think, perhaps. I am uh, being too critical on that aspect. But this is a big update overall. I am a Connect subscriber, so I will be able to benefit from this and I will find it massively useful. Others who maybe are not comfortable paying that three pounds or dollars a month, I think it's quite harsh on them when they've already spent a significant amount on their device. Follow along with my channel if you find Remarkable or e-ink content useful and I'll see you on the next video.